Hey, Flimsy Lunch Tray here, and welcome to our Monday edition video. And we're going to be talking about Dirigible Derby, or now known as Airship Escort. And I'm divisioned up with my clan commander in the Yu Yang, and myself in the Tier 10 Tech Tree German battleship, the Preussen. So this was uh, Preussen replaced the uh, Grosse Kurfist, or Grobe Kurfist, however you want to say that, GK. Um, and that ship went to the armory for coal, and then Wargaming thought it was befitting to put something that maybe followed the line a little bit better, um, and so that ship was the poison. So let's talk a little bit about the ship, and I'm going to actually talk more about the gameplay of Dirigible Derby, but just as a quick reminder, if you're not familiar with the poison, um, she's a large German battleship. Uh, she has 105,800 hit points. Uh, she has 18 inch guns, 457 millimeter guns. She's got uh, eight of them as a whole. Uh, has the standard damage uh, control team, a repair party, a spotter plane, and hydroacoustic search. Uh, very infamous for the German uh, battleship, six kilometers for ships. And I think it's like four kilometers for torpedoes. Maybe it's 3.5. I, I don't quite remember. Um, but also, very, very, very good secondaries that we can get out to 12.5 kilometers. Um, as this uh, Bourgon, for some reason, has decided to go very aggro on Clan Commander Doom. So we're going to have to... Um, I've turned out like this to get all my turrets on the Bourgon. Because um, we definitely want to kill him before he gets uh, too close to pick up uh, Doom. Uh, just by proximity detection of being two kilometers. Um, so let me just talk about the game mode as kind of this engagement unwinds in the back. So, Dirigible Derby, I'm going to probably keep calling that even though it's escort, airship, airship escort, whatever, um, is an interesting one. I really like this game mode um, quite a lot, actually. Um, Wargaming introduced it. I think this is maybe perhaps the third iteration, not the second, maybe it's the third uh, iteration of this. It's been very popular among players, um, primarily because it entices brawling, even though you still have GKs on the AB line or the IJ line, but it encourages brawling because of having to escort your airship, which you can look at the minimap. Um, so for here on this map, you can see kind of um, swiggles along, that's the word I want to use, curves along. Um, and usually the midpoint, and uh, definitely by the end, um, the airships are very close. So the goal is, uh, first off, you need a ship in the green circle at all times. Um, it'll go, the airship will go 12 knots, but with uh, one player in it, it will go 18 knots. Uh, regardless of how many players you have in the green circle, it will only go uh, 18 knots. Now, the enemy team can step onto the green circle, and that will significantly slow the speed down of your airship to, I believe it's 6 knots, if I remember correctly. We'll have to look and see as the battle progresses here. Uh, and your job is to, for your team, is to slow down the enemy airship, but speed along the progress of your um, airship to the destination point, which is actually where uh, I'm currently spawned along with Doom. Uh, now, there's gonna be a big fault that the enemy team has here, but I'll talk a little bit more about that later as the battle unwinds here. So you get to escort your airship to the end destination. So there's kind of two, well, maybe there's three important factors. One is, is you want to be able to have an allied ship, which you can see right now we do not. So it's only going 12 knots because we don't have anyone in our green circle. Uh, you want to have at least one allied ship um, in the green circle, hopefully at all times, uh, to be escorting your airship along. Um, typically that can be handed uh, down job to a destroyer. Uh, typically that would spawn on that flank. In this match, there's one sub and one destroyer. Um, so there is not much that uh, we're gonna be able to do since the our destroyer, Doom, is spawned all the way over here. Um, but you can have maybe some tanky battleships or a cruiser just kind of walking along with your airship. Um, so with that out of the way, 
in terms of what is important, that's the first point. Uh, you want to be able to have an ally in the green circle. Uh, and then really what matters most is the mid to end point. That is where you want to have control. I'll see a lot of teams that will simply just sail towards the starting point uh, where the airship begins and there's no one securing the end zone. So to me, a very important objective when you're playing this game mode is securing the end destination, securing your end points. Um, <laughs> yeah, we slapped him pretty hard. Uh, you want to secure the end points. So their destroyer, for whatever reason, decided that uh, unless he spawned on the complete opposite flank, um, is uh, not down here. Although I would think he would had to spawn over here, but perhaps not. Perhaps he did a, a mirror reverse of the spawning. Um, but none of the enemy ships have decided to secure the end zone. So they're really focused on the middle, which can work if the, your team um, commits and really holds down their own airship as well as slowing down uh, the enemy airship, so in this case us, uh, it can work out. Um, but the challenge uh, such on this map is because they have left the flank completely open and exposed, uh, we can simply move up and punish them. So Doom, in being in the Yugang, can simply throw a lot of deep water torpedoes um, down along the uh, G, uh, F line, F, G, H line, if you will, or I guess primarily the G, H line, and get some nice, decent torpedo hits. So he is able to cause a little bit of chaos um, because there's no one uh, putting him in check, if you will, or myself and the Minnesota here can sit here and soon to be also the St. Vincent can sit here um, and uh, punish the enemy ships as they come up one by one. So we punished uh, the Drake, um, we were able to kill him, and now we're focusing down the Jean Bar, who seems to be a secondary build, because these secondaries are still firing, um, and each ship that continues to move up here. So we're just sitting here, there's no need for us to go out um, past the F line, FG line, um, because we are securing the end zone, that is our goal, that is our objective, we spawned on this flank, um, that is going to be how we play this. Um, now with Poison also having the 6km Hydro, uh, but I think Poison is actually really good for um, airship escorts. Um, as well as I'd also say something like the GK, because um, you have a large health pool, right? Uh, Ohio would be, even though you don't have Hydroacoustic Search. Um, my general approach and how if you are wanting to take a brawling battleship into airship escort is that you really want to wait to that midpoint uh, last half of the battle. Um, that's the same way I've always encouraged players when they are playing, um, as I grind, grinded up the um, German battleship line, because at range their dispersion cannot be the greatest, although with Poison you actually have decent dispersion, you have fewer guns, but uh, these, a better dispersion um, and accuracy than the GK. Um, but you typically want to wait and make your presence felt very strongly in a brawling battleship uh, during the last uh, half of the battle. So around now um, and then uh, coming along. But we've actually been able to work really well here on this flank because we've already done 176,000 damage. Uh, so we're basically just being a tank, uh, we're securing the end goal objective, and because we have secured the end goal objective, that means that soon, shortly, I will be able to step onto the enemy airship circle so we can slow it down. Because you can see, uh, if you look at the top of the screen, uh, it tells you the speed of your airship, uh, but it also gives you the time. So in 2 minutes and 20 seconds, enemy airship will arrive if no one steps onto it. Um, and then our airship, if no one steps, if none of our friendlies support it, will step on. Uh, the airship will arrive in five minutes and thirty-three seconds. So my goal here, as this one goes bye-bye, uh, is to get turned around to deal with these uh, enemy battleships in here. We also have a gearing running around somewhere that we're not entirely sure uh, where he is. But now you can see enemy ship has stepped onto our circle, so uh, airship uh, perimeter. So now it's only going six knots. Um, I am seeing that theirs, however, is going up to 30 knots now, so I wonder if it's actually slightly different in my head uh, in terms of the progress. Oh, I wonder if it's because, an, I wonder if that was because an enemy ship was on ours at the same time um, they had an allied ship on theirs. 
I don't... Huh, I'm actually gonna have to put a comment in right at the bottom once I look back to the footage and figure that one out. Um, but we are able to assert our dominance here. We are the king of the channel uh, at this point in time. Even though the St. Louis continues shooting at us all the way from the eye line. Uh, so we can continue asserting our dominance here. So here I just dropped some speculative depth charges because I think the submarine is somewhere nearby. Perhaps he hasn't been spotted for a while and it only makes sense that he's probably coming down along this way. So I'll take some uh, blind uh, checks here just to see if it's picking up anything, but also to see if there's any AA uh, being thrown um, by that enemy gearing, which hasn't been detected for a good bit. So um, now we pick up the enemy gearing, who is uh, right next to us. Uh, so probably at this point, um, he is going to want to get me out of this circle by killing me. Uh, so I draw attention to my team. You want to draw attention to your team when uh, properly able to do so. So I don't have enough time to switch to high explosive, so we're just going to get five overpins. And our secondaries are going to start going off. I was, I was actually rather certain that I was going to die because I didn't know if I'd actually have enough acceleration uh, to get ahead of these torps um, by the time that the gearing torpedoes arrive. Um, but it looks like he's dropped them a little too far back when our ship was still moving in reverse. So we're actually only going to take two torpedoes and we are going to live. So uh, I was actually thankful uh, for that as we're still trying to pick up the St. Louis is um, now deciding to push in closer to our uh, Minnesota and St. Vincent. So here again, I'm dropping speculative. Um, yeah, okay, so now I see the speed has gone up to 30 knots for ours. Um, I think that's also because, uh, oh, and we accidentally got, well, not accidentally, by coincidence, we got a depth charge hit. Um, but yeah, so if you're on the enemy team circle and you have an ally ship in your own circle, your airship will go 30 knots. So this uh, three speeds, 30 knots, um, 12, no, 30, sorry, four speeds, 30 knots, 18 knots, 12 knots, and six knots. Um, so now we're, you can actually, I was wondering about this too. Uh, when you're looking at the arrow indicator on the top, I don't think they had this last time. It actually shows the different speeds you can have. But our airship didn't actually reach the end point because we killed all the enemy ships uh, before the our airship arrived to the end point. So that's another way you can complete the game, right? So we're going to do over 211,000 damage and picking up Snatched Glory. Um, it's kind of, that's a, a fun uh, achievement to get held at bay in addition to the push ahead hold them back so they did two destroyed couple citadel hits 188 uh, secondary hits uh we're going to top the team with 2200 basic sp with doom with 1800 experience uh so all in all uh pretty uh, good time their sub enemy submarine actually scored top on their team he took down two enemy ships so or two of our ships so that's interesting here you can see the damage spread out so we definitely did a lot of damage to that jean bar uh, got decent chunks in on the Borgone as he was kind of going under pressure with our secondaries. And of course, uh, we did a lot of damage to the Drake uh, when he came out broadside to us there for the second time. With premium account, over 450,000 credits all said and done. So Dirigible Derby, or uh, Airship Escort, is really nice game mode. One of the big draws, I would say, if you are a player who recently has picked up a newer tier 8, tier 9, or tier 10 ship, and you don't know how quite to play the ship and you're trying to figure it out, um, you can do it in Airship Escort because I kind of consider this uh, one of the phrases that uh, I use along with some other clan mates. Is it's kind of like almost a throwaway game mode um, in the sense that uh, there's no uh, your stats don't get tracked if you care about your win rate or... Um, PR, anything like that, personal rating, uh, that you can just simply test things out. And I've used uh, Dirigible Derby, Airship Escort, uh, last several iterations and also additions when we had Grand Battles, when they first had super ships to Hanover and Satsuma, to just test things out when I was trying to get the hang of some new ships. So I highly encourage using Airship Escort if you're trying to figure out that newer Tier 8 or Tier 9 or Tier 10 ship, um, because uh, there's not a lot of pressure uh, within that, but the key objective is you need to be escorting your airship. Um, I'm not sure if that's why Wargaming changed the name of this game mode to Airship Escort um, to make it a little bit more practical and understanding and more defines what the game mode actually is. Uh, you need to be escorting, protecting your airship, and then you need to secure the end zone. 
Um, I see a lot of people play on the um, A, B, C or the um, J, H line. Um, really far away from the action. I see brawling battleships on the back lines when they need to be a little bit closer. And as I was saying with the German battleships or a brawling battleship in particular, it doesn't mean when I say, you know, wait till the last half of the battle to make your presence felt or known. Um, it doesn't mean being far back on the A or J line. Um, just stay somewhat nearby to your airship or the end zone and asserting your dominance because um, you want to be able to pick out those engagements rather well. So with that being said, I'm going to wrap up this video. So if you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up. If you did not, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe if you do want to see more. If you're subscribed, thanks so much. I would appreciate it, and we'll catch you next time. Take care.